All right, in this video, I want to show you how to make a new SOP template from scratch. So you go over here and you click the green button, new template. We're going to give it a name. And as you can see, by default, there are four tasks and each task has no widgets over here on the right hand side. So we're going to call task one, we'll give it a name, we'll call it contact info. So in contact info, you might want to start with a text widget. And in this section, you are going to store some contact info. And as you can see on the widgets on the top, we have text widgets, image widgets, video widgets, file widgets, checklist, and then we have input widgets. So we have a short input widget, we have a long input widget, we have an email widget, a website URL widget, we have the ability to upload files, and then a date picker. So you can see here in this section, we're gonna store some contact info. So, well, we need a place to be able to store their email. So we'll call it email. And we can make this required or not required. In other words, mandatory, so that this step can't be skipped. And let's say that we also want to get their uh, website URL, but we won't make that one mandatory. Now in step number two, uh, let's just call it um, watch this video. So here we're going to put on a video widget and we're going to paste in the URL of a YouTube video and as you can see the video then shows up right away. And in step number three, let's uh, say that now we're going to take out the trash and here we're going to say that in this section we are going to show you how to take out the trash and let's just go take out the see if we can find an image take out the trash so we've got an image this one will do so we'll just save that as an image and then we'll go back to what we're working on and we'll say well we want to add an image widget because it's part of the instructions as an example so we're going to do that shutterstock take out the trash image so that's going to be there and if we wanted to for example have a place for someone to um, let's put enter any special instructions so here we want to say in the box below please enter your special instructions and then we're going to put a form and we'll call it special instructions Okay, so this is a super duper basic SOP template that we've just very, very quickly built. Now to see what it looks like for the person. So we would use this to uh, assign work to an individual on our team. This was assumed this is our, our highly detailed set of instructions. And I'll show you some best practices on how to create highly detailed instructions here in just a minute. But let's run a workflow on this and we're just gonna call it demo. So now, as you can see, when someone comes along, they're asked for contact information. So we're going to say bill at Microsoft.com, Microsoft.com. And as you can see, when you put a URL in, this button becomes clickable. And uh, as long as you put in a properly formed URL, which I didn't do it would take you directly to that website so you could say well now and finish this step there's our video for us to watch and you can actually watch it right from within Floster. here is our image about taking out the trash and then if I had special instructions like please so this is when I'm running the workflow I'm collecting information please go around to the back of the house blah 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 okay so I could say, well, you know, done, 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 done. And this workflow would be archived as a result. Now, obviously that, so that's how you create a workflow. Then I want to show you like, what is a, what are, what are some of the best practices for creating a workflow? So I'm going to look at an existing workflow to show you that. So you can see in this case here, this one, this SOP template uh, is called how to use Ahrefs 
for keyword research. And we actually have run a workflow based upon this template called demo. So in a fictitious world, so now I have assigned this to me and I've given it a due date to the 26th. So what are some of these best practices? Well, you can see here that we have 38 steps to this workflow. So this is what people need to do on the left-hand side of the screen. Then on the right-hand side of the screen, for step three, enter broad keywords, we have instructions on how to do that step. And this is made with widgets as I showed you earlier in this video. The thing that's really important to understand when you're making a workflow is to have lots of steps and keep each step relatively short. In other words, really only one thing to do. Like you can see in enter broad keywords, there's one thing to do. There's enter your broad keywords. So I would say apple slicer if that was my broad keyword and I would complete that task. Then it says well, now run a phrase match report and it shows me how to run a phrase match report. Okay, so if I'm in href software, I've run that report. Now I would click complete, complete rather, and then the next step is having a same search terms report. So again, back in href software, I would go and I would follow that, and I would do that, and then I would follow each one of these steps. Now the opposite of best practices would be to put all of this stuff just in one step, and then you'd be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. And the reason that that's not a very effective method for creating an SOP is that the more scrolling there is to do on the right hand side, the more likely it is that somebody's going to forget something. Plus, if you don't have it break, broken down into lots of different tasks, you can't then assign, if you only have one task, well, you can only assign it to one person. Well, what if for a given workflow, um, you need to have multiple people working on different sections? Well, if you don't break it up, into lots of steps on the left, you don't have the opportunity to assign it to lots of different people with potentially lots of different due dates on the right.